Oh, this is going to be a good one. Delisa Hawking here. Thank you so much for joining us on Spirit and Spark TV. Uh, recently, we've been doing a series of videos looking at the energy that we are involved in uh, as we begin to close out 2022. Katie Sweetman is one of my favorite astrologers. You see her here on the screen. Hello, Katie. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have one of my favorite Instagram accounts on the planet. I talk about it all the time, Empowering Astro over on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I've invited Katie on here because I want to look at the energy that we're approaching for New Year's Eve, you know, 22 going into 23. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Katie. Uh, she's actually an astrologer and a psychic medium uh, living in the New York area, uh, East Coast for sure. Uh, she started empowering astrology in 2010, and it's to help people blend astrology and consciousness. Uh, to help them live a better, more soulful life. And as I mentioned, Empowering Astra over on Astrology, the website is empoweringastrology.com. And I've included all the links uh, to Katie's work in the description of this video below. So make sure you check out Katie's work. So Katie, we got a lot going on. We've just been through the, the October 25th eclipse. We had the November 8th eclipse. We are rocking and rolling, and now here we are uh, in, uh, approaching the end of 2022. So, isn't that crazy? By the way, I don't, I don't get it. Where? Right? I mean, I know that we do this every year, but I feel like my brain's somewhere in July, and it's like you know, as we record this, it's my birthday season, and I'm just like, but isn't it, isn't it summer sign? Like, I'm, I'm so confused. But yeah, yeah, we're here. We're almost done with 2022 and we're going to be celebrating a new year that has got a lot of big astrology going on. And then I know that we talked about this in your summit, um, the uh, Planets and Predictions Summit for 2023. But yeah, like how do we celebrate this new year? Um, and I think one of the things that we have to understand is that the astrological calendar doesn't line up with the the regular calendar so even though we want to all you know celebrate sometimes we're in those capricorn energies of like gotta get our life in order and and prepare so it's this um this uh this new year's it it you know, speaking of eclipses uh this new year's actually activates eclipse energies so Maybe it's not the, the, you know, it's a Taurus moon. Taurus likes to have fun, to eat, to drink, to graze. Um, but it's a Taurus new moon that comes just two lunar months after, no, not even, it's a lunar month after a uh, lunar eclipse in, 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 in Taurus. Wow. Yeah. It, the, you mentioned the calendar and how it doesn't quite align. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into that a bit more. I feel it's a year that's gone fast in some way and also very slow. I'm curious, everybody watching, drop in the comments and let us know, what do you think about timing this year? Because I agree, it almost feels like I'm floating around in like five years ago. It doesn't feel like I'm in 2022. I have no real concept of time anymore. And I've had, you know, I have a lot of Neptune in my natal birth chart and it just feels like this kind of hazy, where am I, wonderland kind of timing. Time's an energy. Maybe we don't always think about it like that, but it's an energy that can constrict and open up. And that's why sometimes time just feels like it's going forever. We look at the clock and it's only been two minutes where time moves quickly, even though like the clock isn't moving quickly, but our perception of time it was quickly and astrology is all about time the energy of time the shape the quality of time that's the thing about eclipses and why i get a bit nerdy and i get a little bit hyper focused on eclipses because it really creates a new structure of time and so the solar eclipse of october 25th created a new structure of time built around the energies of scorpio so as we go into the new year we're like oh it's a new year but we're still in a, in a six month window that takes us all the way to April 20th of 2023. We're not done with the astrological year. Capricorn is the 10th sign. We got to get all the way 
to the end of Pisces and in, in the spring equinox, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, to, ha to have the beginning of the astrological year. So we're sort of in between something, even though the calendar is saying, hey, it's 2023. That's why when I do astrology reviews for the year, I'm like, you know, kind of it's funny. We can't just look at the year as a standalone block of time. It's actually these spirals of intersecting times. And that's why even as we go into the new year with Taurus moon, we can't forget that two months before we had a solar eclipse in Scorpio, a lunar eclipse in Taurus. Hey, Taurus. We can't forget that. Saturn is wrapping up its time in Aquarius. So this is a, a moon that's going to square Saturn. Hmm. Kind of takes some of the fun out of New Year's Eve. Um, we can't forget that this is a moon that activates the energies of Uranus. We're going to have a moon Uranus conjunction at the time of uh, New Year's Eve. Anything goes. But Uranus has been in Taurus since 2018, 2019. So these, they're, these are the small moments in sort of these larger threads. This is where the eclipses activate. And then in a larger space of time that is sort of within both the container of, let's say, October to April 2023, but also 2018, 2019. I, it, it's a lot of different cogs and wheels and maybe this is like my my analytical quasi engineer brain like I can I can see that I can just be like no it's not just this hand on the clock it's all these different hands on the clock and yes we're saying happy new year but the hand on the clock is pointing someplace else so yeah that's you know to go back to your point about time time's funny right now it feels like it's just increasingly funny yeah it, it's peculiar for sure a uh, couple things um so the astrological new year if we were going to say okay this is the first day of the new cycle just to clarify for everybody watching would it then be uh the transition from pisces into aries correct okay. correct and even in different ancient cultures and and i'm hopefully i'm not wrong i think the persians celebrate their new year with the spring equinox um like the zoroastrians and the persians and that stuff is like two thousand years old Be and, and this idea of the ram and you see the the horns of the ram um airy season spring equinox and peep the, the grass and the green and so from a very ancient standpoint we would celebrate the new year with the start of the zodiac calendar which is aries aries is the first sign pisces is the last sign when we get to the holiday season the sun's in sagittarius for the most part yippee like we get to be in the energies of jupiter and to drink and if you drink or to give to give gifts and to enjoy and to have fun and to get dressed up jupiter and leo um and then um and the sun goes into capricorn and then we've got that last week of, of December where we got to like really think about what we did wrong and uh, prepare for the new year and be like, oh man, I'm, I've eaten so many cookies. Um, I really need to make some big changes in the new year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we did a, a video with uh, Nora Rochelle last week and uh, she talked about how there were a couple of dates in December when you really should like sit down and and get your manifestation desires and order. So if anybody missed that, we premiered it last Friday. So just check the YouTube channel. Um, the other question I have is you were talking about some of the energies that are activated on New Year's Eve and we're going into 2023, at least on our calendar system. <laughs> right. It feels to me, and I'd love to know what you think this vibe is going to be, but to me, it feels like, perhaps a bit of overindulgence or like a bucking of the system like oh you've held me down I'm going off the rails if we're not careful right like there's always right right, right. We've, yeah. we've had, a, had a couple of years that have been um not easy and maybe this is a new year's we're like oh everything's back to normal my concern is that in 2023 Pluto goes into Aquarius so maybe that's not the case but Maybe you're absolutely right. Maybe that's the, the the pleasure and the indulgence of a Taurus moon. Um, maybe that's the moon in Uranus, and Uranus is just like anything goes. Um, it's a Uranus. You have to understand. There's a sense of like 
time and continuity and memory, but Uranus is not sentimental. In fact, it like wants you to cut and break your connection to anything that is restricting you from being you. So of course, that's an energy that people can go a little crazy with. But if you're going into new year where it's just like, I got to really make some changes. And maybe the things that you thought you were really connected to in 2022, you're not going to feel so connected to in 2023, possibly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I certainly feel that showing up. I see it in in, uh, the lives of my clients that I speak with. There was something really strong. And as you mentioned, we're going to get kind of a feeling of this eclipse energy again here on New Year's Eve. Um, So it shouldn't come is such a surprise to feel like, oh, we're going to get this other wave. But I've just been seeing this trend of, oh, wow, that really doesn't work for me anymore. Sorry, like this door is closing. I'm going over here. And I know we have eclipses every year. We deal with different energies that the eclipses embody each year, right? Like, so we know that this is not something that's quote unquote rare, but then there's other aspects that go along with it that can make it incredibly rare. But we're kind of used to eclipses happening in our lives. But for whatever reason, the ones that we've had and and the energy that's being activated New Year's Eve, it feels like there is more of a finality to it. Do you pick up on that too, Katie? I'm wondering if, you know, the, to go back Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. That's important to understand because Pluto is starting in 2023, will leave Capricorn for the first time in 15 years and go into Aquarius. So as we celebrate New Year's Eve, it's Capricorn season. We've just had a Capricorn new moon. We're in this time that's very much in this smaller container of time as opposed to the larger container with the eclipses, a smaller container of time, the lunar month, that is about the energies of Saturn. Saturn makes us aware of the structures of our lives, the boundaries, uh, the systems, how things work, how things do not work, how things are in balance, how things are not in balance, whether it's your health, whether it's your relationships and other aspects of your life. When we go into this container of time that's capital, that Saturn ruled, Saturn is a planet of time, <laughs> aging, karma. Um, Saturn is gonna pick up on the energies of Uranus. Oh, there's that planet again. Because in the end of 2020. Two, Saturn and Uranus are making a square to one another. So this is this is the, maybe to go back to your earlier comment about like there's something about these eclipses. Well, it's these eclipses with Saturn square Uranus, and Saturn square Uranus is like I have to break out. I have to do things differently. It's it's the things that you thought were reliable, rock solid, grounded, are not so rock solid and grounded anymore. So as we're getting to the end of the year, we're, we're dealing with, with that, but there's even as we get to New Year's Eve, Venus, ruler of the moon at the time of the, of the, the new year, is in Capricorn, and it's making a conjunction to Pluto. And Pluto is like Uranus, an evolutionary planet. And Pluto is like, you know, there's a sense of like where wherever Pluto shows up, things can end so that something else can begin. But this is the end of the sign. Like by March of 2023, Pluto's making its first jump into Aquarius. So maybe that's why there is that sense of finality and a lot of mixed energies in the time of the new moon and not new moon, the new year. Um, and maybe we just feel like we're going into a very different time. Yeah, because even as you share that, and thank you. Um, as a clairvoyant, the imagery that I'm seeing is being in this hallway with all these doors and all of these doors are closed except for one really bright one that's right in front of you. So knowing that they, my spirit team talks to me in symbolism, it does feel like there is a lot of this releasing, purging, letting go, but also with the awareness that, you know, you have this, divinity within you that's not going to leave you behind there is going to be that northern star that is going to open up to you so I think it reminds me of like the tower card you know that 
yes, there are things that feel like they're just going to implode and shake and crumble and perhaps um, things that you've had as structures or formalities in your life are going to change. They're going to be different, um, but it doesn't mean that it has to be bad or fearful um, or anything like that. Yeah. And, and the tower card is the time when the things that we thought our ego needed, it's not what we need. And that's where the things fall down so that we can open up and really face ourselves. It's not, I mean, if we're just kind of bouncing with the, the energy and the archetype, it's not an easy card, but it's, it's a necessary card in our, in our step of spiritual evolution. It's it's like Scorpio and Scorpio season as we record this. You can, even though it's this, and I'm going to use the D word, death. It's a sign of death, mm -hmm. but death is a necessary part of life. You cannot live life without death, even if it's in a moment. And so everything has its own place, and that's the part where the ego is like, but I don't want to retrograde. <laughs> I don't. I want this to be like this. Like, when is this going to be my time? And your time can be in this moment. This is why it's really hard for. And I get it. I've been there. Um, it's like, why is this not happening the way that I want it to be? When is it going to go back to normal? It's like this is this is it. Be in the now. Live your best yeah. life, even when the astrology is terrible. Don't wait because life is short life is short and it's moving right along with or without you yeah uh, and you're here on earth school learn it participate be the student in the front row like hey show that to me again let's do this you know let's let's move through this uh i just realized that new year's eve is on a saturday <laughs> on so, time. yeah so it points to people just being like you know what it's a saturday i'm gonna go live my best life um so as we think about that and everything you've shared so far <laughs> do you feel like what are you do like I guess I could ask you this like what are you doing for New Year's <laughs> Eve because I don't want to I don't want to bring up fear in people um but there's just so much volatility you know happening in in every community right now when you look at the astrological energy does it feel like one of those New Year's Eves where you're like, hey, stay at home, pop some popcorn, watch the ball drop on TV? Or do you think you just go and like express yourself and wear your feather boa, have your bottle of champagne and just rock your socks off? Like, <laughs> I think it's a little bit of the latter. I, I think, you know, everything in moderation, of course, um, you know, the, the, I'm going to say some astrology speak the moon is in the fifth house of the sun um the fifth house is about joy creativity passion parties so and it's a taurus moon so it wants to indulge it wants the the, the sometimes the finest you know that's the thing about uh capricorn and taurus is that they're money signs uh you know capricorn we don't always think about money but it's it's sort of the structures that actually allow us to create wealth in our life so maybe this is a time where people are feeling like they want to indulge. And I, I realize that just from a, just an economic standpoint, things are a little crazy right now. So maybe you can't, maybe you have to get creative. You're honest. Maybe you have to do things differently. You're honest. It can't just be, you know, you know, having fun as you would normally, but fun can be having in a lot of different ways. So you asked me what I would do. So this is where I'm going to sound a little bit like a Grinch, but I'm only speaking for, for myself. This isn't an, I, when it's these types of holidays, New Year's, Halloween, other things. I really don't like being out because I'm really energetically sensitive, Neptune. Um, people are not always thinking clearly and, and and I live in a big city. And even when I was actually in New York, I was like, I don't want to be on the subway after midnight. I don't want to be anywhere. I mean, people are like, I'm going to go to Times Square. I'm just like, are you crazy? Um, you're, it's just, you're in that energy of people. And when you're in that energy of people, especially if alcohol is involved, people aren't making smart individual decisions. You can sort of be pushed and pulled in different ways. So it is a Mercury retrograde <laughs> during um, during the new year. Yeah, Mercury turns retrograde on, um, I really hope that I'm right, uh, the 29th of December, at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So in the ballpark of Pluto. 
I'm not a I'm not a Mercury retrograde or a freak or outer. That's a, an official term. Um, but I just you know we all have to. A retrograde planet, and funny, we were talking about this before we started recording, a retrograde planet means that we can't do the planet in its normal way. We can't be active. We have to be receptive. We have to be reflective. We have to intuit instead of think and move forward. And the sort of this cultural mentality about retrogrades is like, even the, 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 the tides they can't always push out. They have to push in. It's just the natural duality of life. So a retrograde doesn't mean your plans end or your party stops or you can't do anything, but you have to do it in a way that is receptive. So if it were me, and maybe if life were just a little bit different than it is right now, I would cook a beautiful meal, Taurus. I I would put all my love and all my hopes for the new year. I, I would, um, you know, maybe it's something that's a little splurgy um if you can and I, i'd like a nice cocktail i'd like champagne um i would i would invite people over and it would be cozy and low-key and that's how i would do it what about you what would you do i echo a lot of what you said i think there are a few times in my whole life where i was out for new year's eve and if i went out they were usually like at someone's house um it's too much in the energy field uh too much volatility for me um you're right like the overindulgence makes me really anxious energetically um so it is incredibly difficult for me to be in large groups uh especially on holidays so i echo a lot of what you said um amateur hour yeah (laughs) Uh, so I, I I tend to be more of a homebody, but I love the idea of cooking a really lovely, perhaps indulgent meal and having a few people over and enjoying that together. That just sounds better to me. Um, everybody watching this, drop in the comments. What are you planning to do for New Year's Eve? We would love to hear. We just all cook together because now I'm getting hungry. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to come. I'm going to come visit you on the East Coast. <laughs> do it yeah, in the past and when i've pushed back on people that want to want to do something and want to go out and drink and party and and like i said as much as i'd like to have champagne and drink being out in a bar or at a club or at a big thing for me personally who is very neptune it's just too much and then what happens is from an energetic standpoint i have to really clear my energetic field the next day oh yeah i i typically feel something like that for probably 48 hours after where I feel like a slug, even if I don't drink by being around too many people. Yeah. I was at a concert in Madison Square Garden and the next day I was wiped and that wasn't because I was just drinking and and, and no, I don't don't think I had anything to drink actually. It it was just the, the, with 17,000 people, all their energy and that craziness, and I was just like, in fact, I and maybe this is a Halloween uh, segue. Like, I think that was the night that I woke up and there was somebody in my room. Somebody had followed me home. I mean, not not physically in spirit. Oh <laughs> Sorry, I should preface that. You're welcome to my life. And yeah, there was a person in my room in spirit, and I was just like, you know, the, the, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. better get out. What concert did you go to? Now, inquiring minds want to know. Billy Joel. Ooh. Yeah, it was like rescheduled from July of 2020 and da-da-da. yeah. Yeah. I, so I was, a, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and it sort of was like, man, this really sucks. Like I do like concerts, uh, but maybe I've, I've hit a point in my, my openness where I, I can't be in a stadium full of 17,000 people. I get it. I received an email um, recently for Dermot Kennedy, and he's one of my favorite artists. Um, I think he's out of Ireland, but he travels all over the world and, and does a tour. I saw him in Las Vegas a few years ago. Well, the email comes out, oh, Dermot's coming back on tour. And I was so excited because there's a few cities and a few dates that could work. And I'm like, nope, just wait just take a breath and book your ticket from a resale site <laughs> right before 
before the concert and figure out how you feel and and which city you want to see him in and right. well, kind of like to the point of like you know what just relax everything will unfold and you can make your decision so be at peace with just letting things be I wish I could not be as sensitive but then if I weren't as sensitive I can't do the job that I'm doing so it's just the cost and for New Year's, you have to make the choice that's right for you. But for, for two energy sensitives who are psychic mediums, being in Times Square or being in a big party where it's crazy, maybe it's not the best energy. Yeah. Tune into yourself and honor yourself. Uh, Katie, is there anything else you want to share uh, as we begin to close out? Yeah, you know, maybe to honor Capricorn season and honor Saturn, um, honor your boundaries, honor time honor your body, honor what feels right. And if you don't, you know, don't feel the pressure to do something, if you don't want to do something, it's okay. It's not bad luck. You're not going to be alone. If you're, you decide to honor it quietly, you can have friends and family with you or do it yourself and, and maybe create nice rituals and maybe journal, maybe do a tarot spread. If you're intuitive, maybe meditate. And, and what, you know, what do you feel like your spiritual team is trying to communicate for you and how 2023 can be a year of continued growth and, and personal, spiritual, collective evolution. I love that. Listen to yourself, honor yourself, stay present. Do what's right for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a reminder, you can find uh, Katie's uh, Instagram account, Empowering Astro. If you're not following it, you absolutely should. It's amazing. I love just how simplified and like crisp the, the communication is, the words are, like it's just fantastic. And empoweringastrology.com is her website. I've included all the links down below. Katie, as always, you are just fantastic. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, to Lisa and to be able to talk about astrology and nerd out and somebody who, who sort of gets it from the intuitive standpoint. You know, it's it's... We live in interesting times, as they say. We do. Very That's interesting true. times. <laughs> well, everybody be safe out there. Uh, have a good time. Have fun. And maybe, as Katie said, go make that beautiful, indulgent dinner at home with a yeah, few of friends. Of that. Yeah, if that feels in alignment. And uh, we'll be talking to Katie again soon, I'm sure. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Have a wonderful 2023. Thanks, you too.